G'day everyone, I'm Smokescreen and welcome back to another video and here we go with some daily race B action from I think it will be last week by the time you're watching this, this was actually done yesterday at time of recording, we're back on the second account r4meters underscore smock for some action in daily race B from the back of the grid now you might be quaking in your boots, wondering why the hell are you doing last to first at Circuit d'Espar Francochamp in Daily Race B, because we know how bad the rolling start is, and as you can see, we are doing the rolling start indeed, but what is that? We're going to get past, or just about get past the chicane before the timer goes to zero, before the countdown completes. Yes, that's right, they fixed the rolling start, the majority of the grid now starts after the first chicane. Basically, if you're 15th or 16th, you'll be basically, 15th is just, just about on it, 16th is in the chicane. Uh, but nevertheless, it's better than what it was before, where if you started pretty, pretty much anywhere from 4th or 5th downwards, you had to go through the chicane an extra time, compared to the people that start in 1st or 2nd or 3rd, I think. But we're back on the second account because we want to have a go from the back of the grid without worrying too much about DR. And of course, on the second account, we still only have the one Group 3 car, which is the Toyota Supra. So that's the one we've got to be using. And of course, our driver rating is not exactly where it should be based on the skill that I have. So we can expect to be a lot faster than a lot of these people around me, and especially if they're going to be driving on the grass. We sent down the inside at turn 8 on this Mercedes, so a bit of a robust move. We're going to be able to complete this on the exit, going around the outside of Jackie X corner, make sure to leave him space on the apex. It's absolutely beautiful, and he's actually using the Formula 1, the, the Mercedes, uh, the Mercedes AMG Formula 1 team livery on his Mercedes AMG GT. But as we complete Puon, rounding out into Le Fugne Chicane, just looking behind a little bit, just to make sure we don't get dived again by the Mercedes. Coming around here, there's been another incident, another car's off the track, so that's another position up in a 12th so far. Catching up to the back of the Mercedes and the Toyota up here. Oh, another car's gone off. Would you look at that? A Corvette's gone off on the outside after turn 14. So we get that done and the Supra up ahead is out very wide so they're going to have dirty tyres. This could get quite interesting actually is the Jack. We're going to look up the inside heading into Blanchemont around the outside he's going to have a go at it. Let's see if the Toyota can sort of defend that. Oh he muscles him out in track doesn't he? And I switch to the inside here last second two wheels on the grass and I managed to get up the inside. That was split second decision that one and that ended up being an absolutely beautiful overtake. That is what I like to call a high octane moment. And we're up into ninth at the end of lap one. We're just gonna fast forward a little bit up to Eau Rouge and Radion, which on the medium tire is completely flat. Have a look at this. You get that absolutely beautifully. It's actually a lot easier. It's, you're more likely to get it completely flat than you do have to lift on these medium tires which is pretty cool, uh, needless to say. So it takes a little while to get up to the back of this Corvette. He goes a little bit wide, almost just flirting with the limits on the exit of Puon, or halfway through Puon now. We're gonna absolutely send it down the inside of Scarlet Solstice. See you later, mate. Down the inside with another sort of robust move there, a little bit of contact on the way through, uh, but we get up into eighth. With no real stress, Peugeot takes a non-ideal line through turn 14 and we get right up to the back of him and we've got a car width, or just slightly less than a car width, too wide off the apex of turn 15 there and we've got nowhere to go. He's going to look up the inside of the Aston Martin. Poor Renegade is going to be on the absolute wrong end of this. Let's see if we have a repeat of last lap. Yep, the inside car shuffles the outside car out, but unfortunately we're not quite close enough to the Peugeot this time to have a sensational last second switch down the inside, but we do have a sensational last second dive from the Corvette, and we just kind of return the serve there. So, yeah, <laughs> it's a little bit, uh, a little bit how you're going. That was the the sort of exchange there in its entirety, to be honest. You get dived by the Corvette, kind of give him a little bit of a bump, 
just to sort of return serve and we're back at status quo, back how we should be and now it looks like we're going to end up going side by side up by Rouge and Radion, side by side with this Porsche, we're both just getting licks of slipstream off the back of the Peugeot, however my car more so as we head up the inside, I think there's some lag between us because the Porsche gets sort of sent wide and there's not really much a dick could do about that, I kept it as tight as I can and I had no real jerky movements to be honest but the Porsche just flung to the left, so I think a bit of lag between us, um, but of course going side by side up a Rouge and Radion is not the best thing to do full stop, so you know, I think <laughs> one of us was going to come off second best, it was either going to be me or either going to be the Porsche, and unfortunately it was the Porsche, but I think without the lag we may have got through there successfully. We got up into fifth and it actually took pretty much all lap to catch up to the back of this Peugeot, and we weren't quite close enough to go for a sensational dive bomb into the bus stop chicane and we don't quite get the best of exits there to try and launch past him up towards the line and ultimately we are going to finish in fifth at the end of this race. But 15th to 5th, we'll take it. Somehow it was a clean race, not sure who decides that one. We definitely had some contact but anyway let's move swiftly onwards starting in 14th this time and you can see we're well past the uh, the after I oh, were well past the end of the chicane it would be the right word not the afterwards of the chicane which is what I was gonna say we're still off the back of them a little bit but you see we catch up by turn one so it's really oh someone's gone off so see you later although he is gonna rejoin on track Hazel is and let's see we're gonna be able to get past before Rouge Radion, not quite, I'm not quite sure what actually happened there, there's a bit of a lag, I think, and we're just stuck behind this Nissan going really slow, about to serve this penalty, it is not going to be too long until we get past him of course, he's going to serve this penalty at the penalty gates coming up halfway along Kemmel Strait, he goes out and smashes the brakes to serve said penalty, and we're going to be looking down the inside of Mercedes to try and get something done, but not quite, not able to get that done into the Com chicane, so we are just going to have to put a bit of a bookmark on this move all the way up until turn 7 when we get it up on the inside on the exit of that turn, just go down the inside of the Beetle as well, getting a poor run down that straight, we're coming up behind a Lamborghini Huracan with another half second penalty, so penalty galore around here today, maybe not quite penalty galore, but penalties are on sale, let's let's put it that way, people seem to always want to pick themselves up a penalty, we've got to look down the inside of Puon, it's a really difficult move as he just shuts the door uh, going into Puon there and I almost get sucked off on the outside of the track, not in the good way either and that little mistake just means the Beetle is able to get its way back through, so not having quite the best uh, opening lap as we did last race, we are going to get around the outside of the Beetle at Lefagne chicane and just complete the move at turn 13, so uh, not bad defence if I do say so myself, we are still looking to get this move done on the Lamborghini, which has turned out to be a very delayed move of course, he takes a very slow line uh, onto a Paul Corpraire, if I can actually not have a bit of a spoonerism and use the correct first letters of this section of the track, but the Lamborghini is a little bit all over the place, he sort of runs a little bit wide through Blanchemont, and I get it up the inside nice and cleanly, and he's dropping back so far, uh, so far so that he can't actually return the move at the bus stop chicane, so we are up into 10th, I think we got up into 9th by the end of the first lap in the last race, so it's not been so bad I guess, yellow flag is out on the exit of the source, and Daniel here has absolutely wasted himself on the outside of the track there, so we get that move done up into 9th, and we're going to have the slipstream of the Aston Martin, however it wasn't until later in the lap before we actually gained a position from another car who ended up crashing at Puon, and we are going to look very swiftly up the inside of the Aston Martin as it opens the door in the braking zone to La Fugnes again and he hangs it out very wide leaving the door very very open and we managed to get that move done once again. Lovely move if I do say so myself in uh, La Fugnes Chicane. I seem to be able to always get my moves done at turn 12, turn 13. I was able to do it in the uh, Audi R18 in the Group 1 Nations Cup race earlier this year. Oh someone's crashed at the bus stops so we're up in the 6th and in fact third is just there, I can see third, so that's the aim for this race, let's see if we can get the podium, we've got to of course get past, oh, the very aptly named Swift, as swiftly as possible, second is right there, maybe we can get second in this race, let's see if this group up ahead kind of implodes a little bit, and if we can actually get the move 
done and a couple of cars on the exit over a Rouge Radion as we head up over the top. Everyone's all over the place. Nissan's switching left, switching right, not quite able to sort of make amends from that. Not quite able to make some inroads there and I end up just bumping into the back of the Nissan who earns himself a half second penalty. So now I've got a car with a penalty in my way that I'm going to end up beating anyway. Toyota Supra. Uh, the Toyota Supras are having a little bit of a biff and barge moment there as we're looking around the outside of the Nissan at turn 7. I've got the Supra of, Gun of Pun Pun right ahead and I've managed to actually get around the outside of the both of them at turn 7. So we dived, dive in deep at turn 8. I've got two cars up the inside. But just on the exit here, the Nissan just straightens out, just smashes me wide. And that is no good at all. And I get a penalty. What the hell? Ignoring the track limit. I did not ignore anything. The, the Nissan driver ignored driving standards, who is now completely all over the place, just not being able to decide which part of the track to put their car, and I almost get up the inside of Blanchemont, so I'm not quite able to get that done. They defend the bus stop chicane, that's fair enough, but look what I'm going to do. I'm going to go around the outside at the bus stop, nice and tight for the final turn, and punch it out in first gear as straight schooled. as possible. <laughs> that is absolutely schooled. Because we both have half a second, we're both going to lose an equal amount of time, which means we both finish in the configuration with which we finished the race on track, which means we stayed ahead of the Nissan in a very TLDL, too long, didn't listen, TLDC, too long, don't care way of saying that we absolutely schooled them. But anyway, let's move on straight up to Eau Rouge Radion in the next race. We're coming up to a Jaguar and a Beetle. We both get an awful run through there. Switch to the outside, switch to the inside. Absolutely beautiful. That's two moves done on over the top of Radion. That was the last second move as well. The car got very unstable as we went basically two wheels on top of the little drain that runs the edge of the track on the outside of Radion. We managed to get those done, but the Beetle comes back. A little bit of a nudge there. Maybe I turned down on him a little bit, but he's now looking up the inside at turn eight. I'm going to defend that beautifully as there's another World War Three happening behind. They both dive each other, and that just releases me to 12th position. Able to put another attack on this Supra up ahead. We gain a load of time through Jackie X corner and we're going to have the slipstream down to Puon. Puon's not the best place to get a move done unless the car ahead makes a mistake but I think I've gone in a little bit deep. It might give me actually a better exit here because I'm able to get on the power a little bit earlier from a slower middle apex but we're going to dive down the inside at the Fugner. Another beautiful rendition of this move although maybe not quite as clean as the other ones. Just sending it down a little bit late in the Supra and I'm putting the move on just turning in a little bit making contact on the apex but it takes us up all the way until Eau Rouge Radion before we can actually take a little bit of a bite out of this Mercedes that's now ahead of us. They're going to defend to the inside of Kemmel, not really, but they kept it central enough that I wasn't able to get up the inside before the tracks sort of opened up for me, but he's still keeping it central, which means I'm narrow for Le, Co uh, for Le, Com Le, Ch for Le Com Chicane. Oh my goodness, can I actually even speak properly? But anyway, we managed to get ahead of the Mercedes up into 10th so far. We are going to, now we've just got to make sure that he does it sort of return the move at the following turn, which of course is another heavy braking zone. But I think we've actually done that perfectly. So we're up into 10th so far, I've got the Aston Martin driven by Froggy again up ahead who gets a poor exit out of Jackie X corner. So we just show the nose down the inside of Puan. Are we going to go for this? Let's see if we can actually get this done. Not we're not able to do it on the entry, but let's see if we can do it on the exit. He just clatters the curb on the inside, which means he's a little bit slow on that second apex of turn 11, and we send it down the inside at turn 12. Absolutely beautiful. It releases us up into ninth, so it's taken a little bit longer to get up into ninth than it has in the last couple of races. We've been able to get up into ninth by the end of lap one. We are going to fast forward all the way until the end of lap two because we have to talk about this Ferrari up ahead, but not before we talk about the yellow flag that's presented itself on the, en on the exit of the bus stop chicane. Somebody either quitting or getting reset there. I think they got reset because there's still 16 players in the race, but nevertheless, we gained a position from someone else's misfortune. So now we're going to be looking to get past this Ferrari as quick as humanly possible. We get a much better exit. We get the superior exit from the source, and we're looking to go side by side up through Eau Rouge, up through Radion. Let's see if we can actually do this. We, as long as we leave each other space, and I think we're going to successfully do this over the top, side by side. We get that done. 
absolutely beautifully. Oh my goodness. Please. That was just akin to ballet. Just ballet dancing between the Toyota and the Ferrari. It's just an insurmountable amount of respect needed to get that done. Corporate needs you to find the differences between this picture and this picture. Indel has told us there are at least seven. Okay, I already see one. Give me. Okay. They're the same picture. Bloody beautiful racing, if I do say so myself, between myself and the Ferrari. So, big shout out to Shashot Amihakyo. We just call him Shashot. Big shout out to Shashot for being able to run side by side through a Rouge Ratty on. It doesn't happen every day. It didn't happen in the first race of the night um, with the Porsche with a bit of lag between us but we managed to successfully get that done. And I was absolutely beaming from that for the rest of this race, so I don't even really care what's gonna happen for the rest of it because I ran side by side through Rouge Radion cleanly, successfully, we got it done over the top. And I mean, I did end up getting the position out of it, so I couldn't have really gone much better. Um, but anyway, we are gonna have to move swiftly onwards as we dispatch this Mercedes heading through Blanchemont, another four cars up ahead that we weren't quite able to make a dent into. In fact, if we had one more lap, I'm pretty confident I probably could have had second, but didn't quite happen in this particular instance here. And we come home once again, fifth, fast slap, clean race up nine spots. I'll take it. But what we're gonna do now is we've had our fun from the back. Let's see if we can set a quick qualifying time. So my current one of a 216.3 um, there, so we're going to be looking to improve upon that. We did break just on the 100 meter board coming into turn one, the source, and getting on the power very gently in first gear on the exit. Coming up to Eau Rouge Radion, it's actually flat out on the medium tyre if you get your turn in right, which we do there. Just turning in. I don't really have a marker actually, I was going to pretend to make up a marker for you. I didn't really, I was just judging it by just sight of the apex basically. They're coming up through to Lacombe Chicane, braking just on the start of the kerb after the 100 meter board, trail braking it in, in third gear to Lacombe Chicane, just nice and gently through here, just keeping the car nice and balanced, turn in, no brakes for turn seven, down the hill towards turn eight, looking on the left hand side, braking just on the start of the kerb, downshift into second gear, nice and gently, don't have too many stabs at inputs, just one gentle smooth input on the brake and one gentle smooth input on the throttle to get through there nicely and then we head down to Pua looking on the right hand side it's just after the 50 metre board in fact down into fourth gear for some nice rotation get on the power as early as possible meet the outside kerb come back to the inside kerb and meeting the outside kerb once again coming into La Fugnes again braking just on the 50 metre board for me downshift into third keep it nice and tight to this first one to take a better line through the second much more important one and we accelerate down towards turn 14 braking just before the start of the kerb on the left hand side if you brake on the kerb you're going off the track and then turn 15 is almost flat just a slight lift as we go onto the apex kerb as it pulls the car around and helps complete the turn and now we head up Paul Corp Frere coming up towards Blanchemont turn 16 which is this shallow left easy flat Blanchemont is a little bit more difficult but it is flat as long as you get the turn in early enough and don't absolutely smash the kerb on the inside and then bus stop chicane bracket just after the 150 meter board you can use second or first gear i choose first gear for some rotation get it stopped and turned for the second part on the power as gently as possible accelerating up towards the line that's a 216.0 and it puts us straight on pole position by nearly two seconds not really much i could do about that because i'm sure i can probably go a lot quicker than what i just did but let's have a look at this rolling start then, shall we? We know they fixed this starting this week. So we're in the lead and we actually start after the start finish line. And we'll see just how close to the first turn we actually start. We start about 80 meters, 80, 90 meters before the first turn. And I think that's a lot better because you had no chance in this race. This race sucked because basically everyone who didn't start pole position had no chance of actually winning. So the fact that they actually have fixed this to give everyone much better opportunity is good news in my books so it was looking to be a fairly convincing race off the start but I just get a little bit too confident and trying to go flat out through a Rouge Radion and I wasn't quite able to get the turn in right that time and I earned myself a half second penalty 
and well, let's have a look. There's actually a curious quirk here. The first lap actually doesn't count. You actually don't post a lap time here. because I think it's because you start after the start-finish line when you go to start the race. You know, you roll, you start your rolling start after the start-finish. I don't think it actually counts as a timed lap because you didn't cross a line to start the lap. You started the lap because, uh, uh, because the race has started, but there's not actually a lap time being counted because it's not sandwiched between two events of you crossing a start finish line but uh, that was a really easy race led from the front our only blemish being that penalty we end up finishing that race like seven seconds ahead from the next car so i kind of left that race there there wasn't really much else to be done because until i get my dr up a lot higher i'm basically going to be the absolute front by a very significant margin of any split that I'm going to get put into at the moment. So I do have to get my DR up and I suppose I should probably just sort of take the bit of a ball fest that it's going to be to get the DR up to do the old DR grind to get up to where I should be. But um, as for now, we just have to settle with some blaster first and a cheeky win and that is all this video is going to be. So do hit the like button if you enjoyed and do subscribe if you'd like to see more videos from me. Do leave a comment as well. Questions, comments, and constructive criticism, as always, very much appreciated. But that's going to be the end of this one today, and that means that is it from me. So once again, I do thank you very much for watching. See you later.